me now to discuss Trump's inaction and Pence's efforts to fulfill his constitutional obligations is Illinois Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy, a member of the House Intel Committee, who was inside that Capitol during the attack. And I welcome you, sir. It's good to talk with you again. And let me just say, I was watching you on a monitor here in the studio as we were playing part of the video showing the insurrection and also listening to Officer Edwards. You watched intently to Officer Edwards, and yet I saw you look away at points during the actual violence and the mob and what was going on. How much does this bring back to you what you must have suffered through in a very frightening way on that day? Well, thanks, Alex. Uh, it was about as traumatic a day as, as you could imagine. I found out there was a bomb placed 200 feet from my office window that day, Alex. And I was evacuated maybe two or three times uh, from building to building um, until uh, we could hide in place or get holed up uh, while uh, the insurrection was put down. It's very traumatic for me and my colleagues. Um, and I think that, um, quite frankly, it's just one of those pieces of footage that brings back some haunting memories from that day. I can imagine. I'm sorry you have to go through that. But let's talk about the uh, initial presentation by the House Select Committee, specifically to the role of former Veep Mike Pence and Trump's attempt to villainize him to the angry mob. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that it was one of the most insidious acts that a president uh, and administration could take. Um, you know, one of the interesting things that I was kind of piecing together is I had a chance to question acting Secretary of Defense Chris Miller uh, with regard to the delayed response of the D.C. National Guard uh, and other uh, law enforcement authorities while the insurrection was going on. And there was about a three-hour gap between the time that people requested help and when it finally arrived. And now we know, based on what we heard during the hearings a couple nights ago, that Trump's inaction actually led to that particular situation. In other words, that was a deliberate um, attempt to keep the National Guard from putting the riot down. And that's the biggest dereliction of duty you could possibly imagine, because people were obviously getting injured, in some cases mortally injured. Um, 140 officers in, were injured in total. And of course, the Capitol was breached. And as you know, uh, they wanted to do harm to Pence and Speaker Pelosi and others. And so um, I'm just piecing together some of the testimony from before and now, and it's starting to come together as to why the response was delayed. Yeah. The committee also says that they have multiple Republican lawmakers who sought presidential pardons, including Pennsylvania Congressman Scott Perry, this following the attack on the Capitol. Take a listen. As you will see, Representative Perry contacted the White House in the weeks after January 6th to seek a presidential pardon. Multiple other Republican congressmen also sought presidential pardons for their roles in attempting to overturn the 2020 election. Well, a Perry spokesperson has stated this is a ludicrous and soulless lie, but I'd like your reaction to the comments that were laid out by Liz Cheney regarding the complicity of fellow members of Congress. Well, first of all, we're going to have to hear what the evidence is on this particular issue, but if it's correct, that uh, folks like Mr. Perry and others sought a pardon, then we have to understand why. Why is it that they sought a pardon? What was the activity or um, what was it that they did that they were so worried about? And that is really at the heart of whether it was just complicity or more. And then we have to uh, look, at the, look at the evidence and, and determine where to go from there. Attorney General Merrick Garland has a lot riding on him at this stage of the game. We know that he is someone who does not like to engage in the marriage of uh, the law and politics. But how likely do you think these bipartisan panel hearings are to result potentially in charges against the former president? I don't know. Um, I, I think that he, like everyone else, um, is is gonna wait for the evidence to unfold. In, my, in general, as I've said on your program in the past, I just think that the Attorney General and the Department of Justice have been slow with regard to the prosecution 
uh, of numerous cases related to January 6th. Um, I think hundreds of uh, people who breached uh, remain un unarrested or not prosecuted. Um, and, you know, people like even the bomb maker uh, that I was referring to before with regard to the bomb 200 feet from my office window, yeah. we still don't know who made it or who the masterminds were behind that. And so I'm just a little concerned about the tempo of the investigation. I know that the DOJ is conducting its own, but we got to accelerate this because the longer that we prolong it, the more the people that did it, as well as others who might be contemplating other acts of um, insurrection, I think that they can get away with it. And that would be just horrible. Absolutely critical concerns you're expressing there, Representative Raja Krishnamurthy. Thank you, sir, for your time.